Thank you so very much, uh, counselors and the members of the public and members of the public tuning in online. I am deeply, deeply honored and incredibly grateful to be here, period. Like, that's just where I'm going to start. I, don't, I know you've got a lot on your agenda. You've already stretched a lot in. I just want to thank you for even giving us the amount of space that you have so far. Um, basically, uh, in front of you and in your packets, you will have already received the, the presentation. I'm not going to go all the way through it, but I would like to touch on a few things. Um, the first is that, okay, so this is the, the piece, and this is the um, initial page. And then this is where I get into symbology, but I'm going to get to that towards the end uh, because there's just a few pieces in particular. At the top, I want to draw your attention to the top right, which is the book, right? So on the figure's lap is a tome, and that tome is a book, and it opens up three different directions, and the pages fold down from his lap, right? The reason I want to call your attention to that is because originally when the Say Their Names Collective put out the call for art, one of the reasons that they were doing it is because of the, um, the current installation that's up, the Say Their Names Memorial that's in the, the park, in Railroad Park. As you know, it consists of t-shirts, and we all know that the t-shirts can only last but so long, right? So one of the things that I wanted to do was make sure that every name that is currently adorning those t-shirts, the names of black people, brown people who've been, had their lives taken by law enforcement, lives taken by racism, but mostly law enforcement, I wanted to make sure that they don't end up like a passing fad or a phase or, or a hashtag. Like, I wanted to make sure that within this piece, every single name, as far as I could, because I went down and documented all of them, is included. So in that book, all those names will be etched. That's what that book is for. Okay, so that's the first piece. Um, because I'm not sure that was clear. The next one is the a note on location. So initially it was going to be in Railroad Park. Um, after a whole lot of deliberation, including with Parks and Rec, we decided that we were going to we're going to end up in Ashland Creek Park primarily because this park doesn't yet have an identity, right? Like, and having crystallizing their call in this park can go a long way towards establishing identity and also making it so that in years to come, if this is approved, obviously, in years to come, the the funds and the and the ways that the the park is is moved can be influenced by the presence of this statue being there, by the presence of this piece being there. Um, the other piece was there were two parts of community inclusion that were that was part of the bequest of the uh, Save Their Names Collective when they put out the call, right? So it had to be, it didn't have to be two pieces of community inclusion, but I ended up doing it because we couldn't have people banging on the metal, like that's obviously not going to work. So I thought of two different ways that the community could be deeply, more deeply involved, such that there's a level of ownership that otherwise we don't get. So the first piece is with the, the colored stones that are going to be going in a ring around the figure. I think, oh, that's nice. I, uh, I think that, hopefully you guys have been hearing me up to this point. Um, I think that a really, really cool way to get the community involved um, for, especially now that one of the stipulations has been that there's two public forums, um, is to get a group of people, anyone, any of the community that want to interact, any of the community that want to engage, you can bring down your kids, you can bring down the elders, and everybody would get together and just paint stones that are going to go around this figure. Because in years to come, again, if it's proved, in years to come, I'm just picturing how glorious it might feel to not just come and see a statue or see a piece or see an installation, but be able to point, bring your kids or bring your friends or bring your family members when they come and visit and go, that rock right there, that's the one. Like, I help paint that. Like, I just feel like that feeling is so delightful. It's, it's just a piece of ownership that adds to it. The second piece, and, and a deeper, more potent piece, is that the front page of that book, so the, page, the book opens up three ways, and then there's a front-facing page. And on that front-facing page is going to be a declaration of intent entitled Crystallizing Our Call, right? And the point of that is that it's going to be a communally drafted collective, obviously there's a lot of moving pieces there, but we're going to figure it out, a collectively drafted statement in which everyone who wishes it, who lives in this, in this community and wants to contribute in that way, we put together a statement of intent that enshrines their intention for the legitimate creation of community, the legitimate creation of the, the, the sustained motives for creating conversations that are going to last, the bridges that are going to be built. It's not about just, oh, this thing, and that's it. Like It's about the, the continuation of it, and it'll always be there, and they can look at their sentences, and they can look at that statement, and know that they had something to do with it, and know that it's holding to them, them to account at the same time. So I just wanted to pull your attention to that. Um, my team, they're, they're like recognized artists, and they're really, really amazing, and I'm incredibly excited, um, but no time, no time. Okay, so in terms of 
the preliminary budget. This is where I'm going to want, how do I make this bigger? <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, the, because those are the next steps, right? So boom, excellent. Um, the proposed budget at the moment is 140 to 160. You know what? I should have had that someplace other than that. Okay. Um, the ridiculous situation that is supply chain and craziness at the moment because of COVID induced all kinds of madness. There's no real way. So I'm just trying to set a number that like based off of the um, proposals that we've gotten from my team and the, the, the uh, materials and everything as they currently stand and as they shift, we're just trying to make allowances for it along with I've been counseled multiple times to make sure that I make allowances for it. All the stuff I don't know I need to make allowances for. So there's a percentage in there as well. The, the proposed timeline, most of the, the challenge when it comes to the timeline is going to be, you know, aside from admi normal administrative lag, is going to be funding, right? Because we can't time that. We know that with in-kind donations, or we feel that with in-kind donations, grants, private funding, fundraising, etc., we're clear that we can raise the funds. We just don't, we don't have a very, very clear uh, metric for how long. However, once the funds have been reached, we're thinking it's like six to eight months, barring any catastrophic anythings, uh, from the moment that we get our funds like fully locked in to the finished piece being fabric having been fabricated, ready for install. Okay. And then um, I'm going to ask for more help again, please. And thank you so very much. Is there any way? <laughs> All right, so shrink it, and then I'll just I'll just see if we can read it. All right, cool. Um, the I'm gonna lean down real close, so don't mind me. All right. Um, uh, the completed sculpture voted for, endorsed by both APRC. You've already seen and heard that. Um, the the opportunity. So I wanted to stress the fact that there's been you know earlier on there was a little bit of. Mm, let's just say mix up when it comes to the languaging, because in my first proposal, I used the word request, right, uh, for when it came to money. And I wanted to clarify that because that's not at all what I meant even then. So um, that this is, as stated above, we're offering this piece as a gift to the city, the people of Ashland and the Rogue Valley to help foster a culture of conversation and embodied action and to serve as a perpetual reminder of their stated intention to continue working toward an ever brighter future in this area. We want to offer you the opportunity to be a closer partner within this undertaking and think one really powerful way for you to de demonstrate your commitment to the values you've espoused concerning diversity, equity, and inclusion would be to fund site prep, install, including potentially submit for the footing or procuring an engine and or procuring an engineer to oversee that part of install installation, right? So I just wanted to clarify the fact that this is not like, I'm an artist, I'm coming to you with this project and I'd really like you to help fund it. That's not where I was coming from. I was just like, I think it would be really cool if as a, as a good faith measure that you, you know, we, we do all the fabrication and all the heavy lifting. And then at the very end, you're like, OK, we'll, we'll put in for the, for the site prep and install. So I just wanted to clarify that regardless of whether or not that's actually what happens. OK. Um, and the last piece will be the plaque. Man, I wish this was bigger. This is just insane. Um, can I even read that? OK, let's try it. I was asked if there was a plaque description. Um, the plaque would be going on the very flattest page that comes out from the front facing page. If there was a plaque description, how would it read? I'm hoping I can pull this off, y'all. Okay, here we go. This sculpture represents the embodied will of a community to create a tangible manifestation of their desire to call attention to and ultimately act to change the plight of black and brown neighbors, brothers and sisters. Some might see an ancestor or a collective embodiment of ancestors. Others may view the figure as the spirit of George Floyd, returned from the future as a being of greater understanding, determined to shepherd the way to a better life after his death turned out to be such a galvanizing spark for so many. The domed wings shield from the figurative missiles of classism, racism, division, and hatred. Along with the literal dangers of weather and time, on his lap rests a book etched with the names of a great many fallen, black lives snatched from the world at the hands of police brutality. 
At his chest is the serene face of a woman representing the capacity for healing, nurturing, growth, and vast reserves of patience with the inevitable process that will accompany all of these things. The space in the chest symbolizes the capacity for limitless love. The colored stones surrounding the figure represent community and cooperation as they were lovingly painted by members of the community at large. A collective statement of intention graces the page at the very front, facing forward into the direction of progress and change. It was drafted by all of those of the immediate community who wished the world and anyone visiting to see that these people chose to use their voices to help this dream become a collectively held reality, thus crystallizing their call. Okay, so that's the end of that. I can stop reading these teensy little words. Wow, that's amazing. Um, lastly, oh, lastly, I just wanted to end with the same energy that I began, which is gratitude, right? Gratitude, this conversation is even on the table. Gratitude that this project is within a collective, yes, of being manifested. Gratitude that this town has come far enough in its evolution that the issues this piece raises are even allowed to be recognized, let alone acknowledged and addressed in this way. Gratitude that even though I speak and coach and mentor and all these other things, at least at soul and heart, I am an artist. And this is one of the things I believe art is for, to spark conversation, to evoke emotion and response, ignite controversy even, for the sake of broadening our horizons, bringing new ideas, bringing ideas outside our comfort zones to the fore, addressing old wounds and proposing new ways of healing them, building bridges and cementing bonds between people when we're willing to open ourselves to the possibility that our perspective is not the only one, that our experiences are touched and colored and brightened when we accept their connection to the lived experience of others. Whew. Proud, I'm grateful, and I'm here. And I'm here because none of this happens if we don't show up. Thank you. I'm just taking a second. I'm a bit speechless. And how can I? How can I talk right after you did? That doesn't even seem fair. Thank you so much for your presentation. Uh, thank you doesn't cover it. I think you can guess that. Um, okay, so now time for council to have our discussion. Councillor Seffinger had already raised your hand. I wanted to say that this project um, is a marvelous project in many ways. It's um, it's a confirmation of what we are as a city and what we want our city to be in terms of accepting all people. Um, it's, it's giving a, a place to younger people in our community to, to make a difference. Um, it's also provided for me a great experience of working with the effort of the Public Arts Commission to look at diversity and, and to look at including a lot of different um, views of art. And I want to say that um, Ken is a new, uh, a new chair, has done a remarkable job in, in, in putting this all together. And I, I really appreciate all of you on the Public Art Commission. Thank you. Hmm. Okay, anybody else? Oh, Councillor Graham? I don't know if this should wait till after we have a motion, but I just wanted to s speak. I imagine a number of us will. When do you want it? <laughs> <laughs> I think you could speak whenever you want. Why don't you speak now, and then we can always make a motion. Go right ahead. Okay, thank you. Um, <clears throat> you know, they... People often say that a, a good sermon both comforts the afflicted and afflicts the comfortable. And I think art can do the same thing. And um, we, we see, you know, there, there are, of course, the, the pieces of art that are beautiful, and they're, they're there to, to beautify a space, and that's fantastic. But sometimes, and I think art at its most powerful, um, causes us to pause and to think and hopefully for a moment to connect with the lived experience of another human being. And we are in a time of great moral reckoning in this country, and we need that connection. Um, right after the murder of George Floyd, uh, Councillor um, Slattery and I were meeting with BIPOC leaders in the community to find out what they needed from the city. 
And they, they told us, and we pretty much transcribed it into a, a resolution and brought it forward. And one of the things in that list was they wanted to see a visual evidence of this community's commitment to the work. And it came through in the resolution. We called it a mural <laughs> because that's, that's what, what, what we were told. But I think we always knew it was something potentially bigger than just a mural, that it was some, it was kind of a, a placeholder for what this community might bring forward around this commitment. And since that time, um, we've gotten to, to accept a number of art pieces that are in line with this community's uh, commitment to doing this work. And, um, you know, we didn't know what was going to come forward when we wrote that, but we, we knew this community was coming forward with something. And I, um, I'm ecstatic to see where we've gotten. I know it's been a little bit of a bumpy ride when you try something new. Sometimes you, you, you have a couple bumps in the road, but our community has rolled through that and stayed, stayed focused on its goal. And I'm, I'm so proud of our community right now. And I just want to thank you, Micah, and thank the Public Arts Commission and the Ashland Pub, uh, Parks and Recreation Commission and the Social Equity and Racial Justice Commission, because what all of that coming forward means is that this piece is supported fully by this community. And so thank you. I also just want to say I can't imagine a more important for conversation for us to be having tonight. Uh, Councillor Duquesne and then Councillor Jensen. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Okay. I was doing okay until the end, Micah. Thank you. <laughs> um, goodness. I, I just, when you were speaking, I don't know that you could feel the vibes that were coming off of me, how proud I am, how grateful I am. When I hear Counselor Graham mention the death of George Floyd, this is what we needed when George Floyd got murdered. This is what we needed is black folks to go and to be somewhere where we could gather and we could be together with our allies. This is what we needed. The importance of this goes so deep. I'm just so proud. Thank you, Micah. Thank you, Pac. Okay. <laughs> Councillor Jensen. Your Honor, this is a long motion. I'm prepared to read it if um, it's appropriate. Sure, go ahead. <clears throat> Thank you, Your Honor. I move to provisionally accept the proposed art piece, Ancestors Future, Crystallizing Our Call, into the City of Ashland Public Art Collection, subject to the following steps to be completed prior to final acceptance. <clears throat> First bullet, that the Park Commission, in consultation with its artist, Mr. Blacklight, consider the final location for the art piece that will best showcase the art installation within the Ashland Creek Park. Second, that at least two public presentations of the sculpture proposal be hosted by the Public Arts Commission or subsequently established Public Arts Advisory Committee to act as a catalyst for dialogue and awareness of our past and of our vision for a just and inclusive future. And third, that the art concept have a final review and approval for quality upon completion by the Public Arts Commission and for the identification and resolution of any installation requirements by the city's park and recreation and public works departments. Is there a second? <clears throat> no, would you like to second? Go we'll ahead. all second it. Second. Okay. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion, any further discussion prior to vote? <laughs> Councillor Hyatt. Thank you, Mayor. And I just wanted to make a very brief uh, comment that I have such gratitude for the opportunity that you're presenting us this evening in combination with the exceptional team that the depth and breadth of that team that is with you in this project your energy this evening was in infectious we all feel it and that in and of itself is a beautiful art so thank you 
and it is um, humbling, and I am grateful for the opportunity, as so well put, to uh, vote yes on this motion. So, thank you. Thank you. I, I think I just need to thank Ken and Cassie for all your hard work. We spent some hours on the phone hashing this out, and I thank you so much. And Micah, what does anyone say to Micah except that um, I remember uh, after George Floyd died, his daughter said, my daddy's in heaven changing the world. She might not have known your name, but I think she knew you. And here we are all the way in Ashland doing this amazing thing. And you're a local artist. How about that? I've been dreaming of local artists doing something and here this huge important piece is being done by you. I, I just um, feels like providence. So thank you so much for coming and gracing us. She sort of took us to church, uh, if, you'll, if you'll allow that phrasing. So that's my contribution to the conversation. Councilor Jensen. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> my hope is that the larger community, um, um, as they consider this piece, um, will avail themselves of the entirety of the conversation and the entirety of the effort and sentiments that went into this project um, and accept it in the spirit fully in which it's offered. That's my hope. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, is there anything further? Roll call, please. Yes. 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 Motion is carried. Congratulations.